Here's what's coming up on the show. So that's why I think sometimes this is such a hot fantasy because it's like maybe not conscious, but like this is an opportunity for me to feel and be vulnerable and it's eroticized. And so then they step into that because it's you're horny, you know, you're, you're, it's all hot and everything. But when it's over, now you're really vulnerable. It's real. It's not just eroticized. I mean, that was real too, but that was anesthetized, right, by erotic feelings. This is the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, for the passionate, and for the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Venus. Thank you so much for joining me. Today is a conversation with Dr. Joe Court, and we're going to be talking about something that I think every cuck, every aspiring cuck, every cuck couple or aspiring cuck couple has thought about or gone through, and it has affected them in some way. So we are talking about, okay, we've all heard about post-nut regret, post-nut clarity, whatever you want to call it. We're going to talk about that when it comes to cuckolding. And how to avoid a potential catastrophe when it comes to when the shit gets real, when you actually go through with a cuckolding scenario with your partner and maybe it doesn't go as you thought it would go. So obviously, this is a very important show today. Now, before we get started, I just have a a couple of announcements, some events that are coming up that you might want to check out. They are both free events. One is live uh, a live chat event in the Queen's Quarters community, which is at venuscuckoldress.com. And that's going to be on Monday, June 17th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. That is going to be a chat about interracial cuckolding. If you want to join in on that and have a listen or join in in the chat, you can certainly do so. Just go to venuscuckoldress.com. Click on the events page to register. Then on the day after, so June 18th at noon Pacific time, I have special guest Confident Cuck joining me for a Pillow Talk live event on Crowdcast. Again, you can register on venuscuckoldress.com. Click on the events page. Today's episode is brought to you by my friends over at Joy Mode. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform even better? Joy Mode's sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout, but for sex. It's designed to support erection quality, firmness, and sex drive. Not only is this the only supplement you'll need in the bedroom, but it also supports a whole list of other great things like blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, and general erection function. Here are the game changers. All ingredients have been assessed in peer-reviewed journals, and all ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. Why go back to prescription or over-the-counter drugs after trying Joy Mode? Small enough to fit in your wallet, take with you on the go, it's the perfect travel companion. Just go to usejoymode.com slash Venus to get 20% off with the code Venus at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code VENUS at usejoymode.com. Great sex solved naturally. Now let's jump into today's show with Dr. Joe Court. Here we go. All right. Joining me on the show, I have Dr. Joe Court. And okay, you sent me this uh, profile and I'm like, holy shit, there's a lot of letters there. And a lot of this sounds very fancy, so I'm going to try and get through it. Dr. Joe Court, PhD, LMSW, is the clinical director and founder of the Center for Relationship and Sexual Health in Royal Oak, Michigan. He's board certified clinical sexologist, author of four books, lecturer and facilitator of therapeutic workshops, and throughout his 39 years of private practice. Um, and is that, oh, throughout, she, see, I fucked it up (laughs) throughout his 39 years of private practice and is the author of six 
books on male sexuality and the LGBT issues. Shit, I'm fucking this up. <laughs> Dr. Court specializes in marital problems and conflicts, mixed orientation marriages, male sexuality and sexual health concerns, sex addiction, out of control sexual behaviors, sexual identity issues, childhood sexual abuse, LGBTQIA affirmative therapy, and I don't know what this last one is. Imago, 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 Imago. relationship therapy. Okay, please explain. <laughs> yeah, my, I love Imago relationship therapy. It's all about um, the idea that couples uh, uh, meet each other through familiar love, that it's not an accident. You're with the partner that you're with and they both, that both partners contain the positive and negative traits of the primary caretakers who raised you. And so from that premise, Imago relationship therapy has a bunch of uh, communication techniques that we use in the, in the room. Okay. 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 That makes sense. And you are host of a podcast. Can't forget that. It's called Smart Sex, Smart Love. And I was uh, listening or watching actually, because you, you have video um, episodes as well, watching your episode with Dr. Kate B. I can't pronounce her last name. I know me um, either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to try because I'll butcher it. But oh my God, I love her. Yeah. I love her. I follow yeah, her on Instagram and she has some amazing reels on there. When she speaks, she is mic drop. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> all right, woman. Like, yes. I know. She's a really good speaker. I know. I agree. <laughs> and the way you were talking about this in the episode, the way she delivers it is just this very, like, it's firm, but it's soft and it's, but it's clear. It's clear as fuck. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yes. So for those of you listening to this show right now, you have to go check out that episode. Uh, the show is Smart Sex, Smart Love, and um, it's with Dr. Kate B. She was talking about women reclaiming their sexuality. Mm -hmm. Wow. she There's some real moments in that show where I was just like, wow. And when mm -hmm. she was explaining to you what it's like to get the dick pics and the anger that comes afterwards, and you were like, I've never experienced that. I was like, yeah. see? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yes. It was very it's very powerful. Yeah, great episode. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the psychology around um cuckolding, cucks, cuck angsty feelings and where this all comes from kind of thing. So, you have so much experience with um couples who are experiencing issues in their relationships. One of the big challenges that I have with cuckolding as so many people have with cuckolding is that this is a very male driven fantasy. Um, lots of guys are interested in this. They're watching the porn. They're thinking, they're reading the stories. They're researching it online. Like it's a sport. Like it is really a big thing for a lot of guys. And they're so desperate to make this a reality. They would really like to, at least. Um, but they're scared. They're scared because the way they have conflicting feelings, a lot of them have conflicting feelings about being into this, really challenges their own ideas of what masculinity is. And they are conflicted with that. And also for couples, this can be like a really scary thing, a road to go down. And, um, and they're kind of just like, well, I'm a, I really want this. I would fantasize about this. I really want my wife to do this, but I, how do I know that this is not going to blow up in my face? How do I know that this is going to be okay and not harm my relationship? These are real legit kind of, uh, um, situations and it makes, it makes it really difficult to be a cuck. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know what that feels like to be in that, but I have I felt these kinds of things from a cuck in a relationship and I really feel bad for them to have to go through these, like em this kind of emotional turmoil of this is so hot and sexy and I really want this. And also this is very scary and makes me emotionally feel very vulnerable and insecure. Mm -hmm. What have you come across in your practice when it comes to couples who are maybe where one of them is going through this kind of thing? Um, well, so sometimes what, well, you know, sometimes when you think about the fantasy and you think I'm going to make this a reality, uh, you don't think about those kind of consequences after you just think, oh, this will be a transactional random one-time thing. And it turns into something else for people. And that's, what's unexpected. Unfortunately, people don't think like that. They don't think, well, what could come from this on the other side? 
because like you were, we were saying before the show, like there's a post nut reality to things when you come down from it and your psychology around it or, or that drove it or that it's attached to from your past rears its head. And now you've got that to deal with in addition to what just happened. Hey, did you know that there's a one of a kind matchmaking service for cuckolding and female led relationships? Venus Connections is a private service for single men and single women who want a loving cuckolding relationship. And now there's a new separate FLR program, too. There's no scrolling through profiles or sharing photos with members. It's totally private. And the dates are blind dates, too. Included in the program is a three-week course and an interview with me. So join now at venusconnections.com and use the code TOPTIER2024 for 40% off the top 1% membership. That's venusconnections.com. Make 2024 the year that you get the relationship of your dreams. Yeah, that's it's a big question mark and that a lot of couples, yeah, they don't really expect it. But for women, this is especially challenging because for a lot of women, this is pressure that they feel from their husband to yeah. fulfill this fantasy. And they're kind of like, oh, I don't know, like, are you sure you want me to do this? Are you sure you're not going to be jealous? Like, is this, are you sure you're going to be okay and stuff? And um, and, and, and so they, you know, their partner reassures them. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. This is going to be so hot. I just want it to look like this and this and this and this and be like exactly like my fantasy. And, um, and then she will go and maybe go and try it in real life. And then it is really hot. She's seeing her partner, potentially seeing her partner, you know, really turned on. This is amazing and stuff like that. And then maybe on the drive home, (laughs) shit goes bad. And like, he's just upset, but she can feel that he's upset, but he won't necessarily, either he doesn't know how to relay how he's feeling, or he doesn't want to relay how he's feeling. And she's like, what did I just do? I fucked up. Like, I'm never, I never want to do this again. Yeah, This is such a big pitfall for this kind of relationship. Oh my goodness. Do you have any suggestions or tips about like, before making this a reality? For some couples, maybe this should just stay as like bedroom pillow talk and that's Mm -hmm. it. And for some couples, maybe they have done the work and they are super solid and they can talk about those potential pitfalls beforehand and they decide to go and do it. How do you know if your relationship is like is good enough, solid enough to go down that road? Well, you don't. Right. And even if the relationship is, you might not be or they or your partner might not be. But one thing for sure. Men struggle with being vulnerable in general. We don't teach, we teach little boys to turn their backs on vulnerability. So that's why I think sometimes this is such a hot fantasy because it's like maybe not conscious, but like this is an opportunity for me to feel and be vulnerable and it's eroticized. And so then they step into that because it's, you're horny, you know, you're, you're, it's all hot and everything. But when it's over, now you're really vulnerable. It's real. It's not just eroticized. I mean, that was real too but that was anesthetized, right? By erotic feeling. So now you've got all kinds of things that may come up that about your history around abuse. Uh, It could be something about parentification from a, from a parent where you um, had to take, you were, there was a triangle between your mother and father being raised. It could be homoerotic or homophobic feelings around this that I, my wife enjoyed another man. I could might've compared myself with this other man. I didn't realize that was going to happen. I mean, there's so many different parts to it that couples need to realize, even if you're strong individually, you're still strong, but it may have pitfalls. Yeah. And the other interesting factor about this whole idea around emotional support within a cuckolding relationship is that oftentimes it's the woman who needs some sort of like emotional support afterwards, especially if that's her first time sleeping with someone outside of her marriage. Mm. Um, She might feel like, yeah, I'm really going to do this for my husband. I can get into this. This is okay. I'm going to do this. And then afterwards feel that kind of like heavy shame around feeling slutty or dirty or 
is her husband, you know, is he not going to look at her the same way? Is he going to, you know, disrespect her now? Or is this going to be weaponized some time down the mm. road? Mm. Um, those are some concerns that I've heard from women. So it's not just guys who need this kind of like emotional support afterwards, but it's women too. Yes. If the, if a couple is going through the idea of possibly making cuckolding, uh, their fantasy a reality, what are some good conversations that you can think of to try to open that dialogue around like, you know, what if, what if this happens, how are we going to deal with this kind of some strategies for couples to kind of initiate that conversation beforehand? Yeah. The first thing I would definitely say is no matter how many, what ifs you make, and, and we can talk about those, there might be a bunch of other, what ifs you never thought about. So it has to be with the understanding that one of us could drop into an unsafe feeling or unsafe space. And no matter how that works, we're not going to judge each other. We're not going to weaponize it against each other. We're going to use it as an opportunity to um, get past it, get, you know, to grow from it in some way. Uh, but that can be so hard when, you know, the act is done, it's happened, you can't undo it, you can't unsee it. Um, but it, I think beforehand, it needs to be really understood. This is fantasy. And, and to be clear, one thing that people don't get clear enough around is one wants it to be, they, they talk about it just being transactional and both of them agree. And then one of them is like, well, wait a minute, I think I want a relationship with this person or some kind of ongoing. And it's a surprise to that person. It's a surprise to the other partner. And that should be anticipated too. That could end up happening. And that, now you've got that tension between you. That's actually one of the biggest fears that cucks have is that they will all of a sudden be replaceable. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, you know, she'll end up enjoying sex with this other guy, feelings will be caught and he'll end up losing her. It happens. It mm -hmm. totally happens out there. And so uh, that's a huge fear for, for guys. It was interesting. I did an episode on, um, I put out on Twitter, like what's the worst part about being a cuck. I did an episode on what the answers were. And it was mm. fascinating to me. One of the biggest things that um, guys really struggled about with uh, being into a cuckold fantasy is having to be so closeted about it, having mm. to keep this so, so secret. It was a big burden on them and it doesn't feel good. And I was like, that's amazing. Cause like, I can't imagine what that would feel like to have to keep that to yourself, like literally tell nobody about that side of you. It's so shitty. Um, but yeah, one of the other things was that the the wife would leave him. Mm -hmm. um, big fear about that. So I, I can I, I can totally understand how something like that happens. What I've seen with couples, it, some couples who are new, is that like he wants this quote unquote bull, the third guy, to be just some random guy that they you know, pick off the internet or something like that mm -hmm. and arrange this hookup, just a random guy, like a one night stand kind of thing. And um, maybe they'll go out for dinner first to meet each other or whatever. But like, it's a very casual thing. Like you're talking about, this needs to be a very casual thing. And, um, but for a lot of the women who I've talked to when it's their first time, they want somebody who is not a one night stand. They want somebody who they feel safe with physically and emotionally safe with they also want to have some sort of like sexual chemistry with this person and and be able to like get to know them and 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 maybe some of that has to do with their own you know insecurities around slut shaming and stuff like that where they feel mm. like if this is not a one night stand thing then this is somehow better i don't know but there's this disconnect there because you've got husbands who want like this to be a no strings attached Lots of rules and boundaries set up so that I, you know, feel like I'm somewhat in control of the situation that seems very scary. And then women who are like, well, I actually don't want to have a one night stand. I want this to be, you know, something more than that, which is like fucking terrifying for some guys. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think that it's a good idea generally for couples who are going into this maybe for the first time? Um, you know, meeting up with a bull for the first time is it a good idea to set some really clear rules and boundaries straight up. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, and 
So yes, talking to each other about expectations around what this is going to mean for both of us. Um, because for the guy, sometimes he's just looking at it as a higher level of masturbation. He's not considering what this is going to be like for her and, and what could come up for her. And she's not uh, a fully a multidimensional partner in this. And so because he's so aroused by it. And so that needs to be talked about and he needs to be respectful and open to what her feelings are around this. But I want to go back to what you said as far as the vulnerability of the secrecy, which contributes to the shame because men are taught. I mean, because what kind of a man would allow his wife to be with another man and be, you know, you're not man, all of that stuff. We don't see that in the gay community, by the way. Gay men can talk about it openly. It's a, it's fun. It's interesting. And it's not invisible. And it's not secretive. It's amazing. Okay. We need to take some notes from that because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read your blog post on um, how to uh, toxic masculinity is killing men. I was just, I read that. I was like, holy shit. Like I'd never, I know that it's harmful and stuff like that. And I understand that. And you explained that in your post, um, but how it actually affects how long a person, a, a man may live. I yeah. never really thought about that. <sighs> People so, don't think. Honestly, so sad. I was it's really sad. And it, what's more sad is how we raise boys um, to be men. And then we forget that we teach boys, turn your back on vulnerability, don't have emotions, don't be able to identify your inner life, don't have an inner life, don't share your inner life, all this crap. And then this little boy becomes this man and he's his own target because he doesn't know how to access any of this. So that's why I think these, fa these fantasies are so um, uh, interesting and curious to these men because right there is an opportunity to have all of the access of all your inner life and to be able to express it, but it's erotic. So it's not, um, real, but it is real. And people forget that. I think that might be a, a thing that couples should talk about. This is real. This is really going to happen. There's another person entering our relationship. If we have any feelings from our past about anybody who cheated on us or any infidelity or how we feel about infidelity, even though that's not at all about infidelity, we should still have those conversations and inoculate ourselves from having the negative consequences from it. I am a, a huge uh, um, fan of therapy. Um, I think everybody <laughs> should go to therapy. Not so because, not necessarily because you have something wrong or trauma or something bad has happened or you have a problem or something is problematic in your life or whatever. Just to invest in yourself and your relationship, it is absolutely well worth the money. <laughs> And I have seen a huge difference in the cucks who have been to therapy mm. and the ones who have not. Mm -hmm. um, and I can imagine with within couples who've been married a long time and that the difference that that would make when it comes to stepping into the, you know, enacting these um, actual fantasies with the, all these pitfalls and possible stumbling blocks along the way. Um, so I'm a huge fan of therapy. I absolutely think that it is worthwhile for everyone. And obviously, um, you've had a practice for 39 years. That's amazing. That's um, crazy. So you, yeah. you understand. Um, but uh, what are some of the things that couples who are thinking about doing this, what are some of the things that would be kind of red flags as in like, okay, we really need to go to therapy together or separate or whatever in order to figure out how to do this or if even if we should do this? Uh, yeah, I think, that, you know, um, the infidelity piece, you know, in, in the past, if, if it could feel like anything like that uh, gets flagged within themselves, if they've had any kind of sexual abuse and some some of the men often don't even know they were sexually abused, even as therapists, we don't I I ask people if they've been sexually abused, but I don't stop there because people don't always see it as sexual abuse, whatever happened to them. So I have to say, did somebody much older touch you across the line inappropriately, you know? Um, and not to say that sexual abuse uh, is always driving any of these kinky fantasies. We know better now. We know these days that it doesn't drive it any more than it drives vanilla behaviors. But it can get reactivated. And um, the couple has to have a uh, red flag would be that they didn't have a good communication with each other. So that's why therapy is so helpful. And another red flag is not having any support. We, I really think if you're going to engage in cuckolding, you should be talking to other people who have also been doing it. If you can find them, yes. right? Yes. So yes. important because then you're not isolated, you're not alone. And you can ask them what were the pitfalls that they've seen or heard that they've experienced themselves. 
I love that so much. And I think that's why there's such a need for community um, within the cuckolding lifestyle, and especially for cucks to be able to talk to other cucks um, and understand that like these these outlets were just they didn't exist before. And luckily, we have places now like the Moan app is really great for um, discussions around this kind of thing. Um, and then there are there's a brand new um, podcast that's just literally this week just been um, released called Cuck My Life, which is uh, <laughs> I love so, it. Yeah, Cuck My Life hosted by four cucks and together. And it's a great show. And I was just like, finally, yes, we wow. need more uh, yeah, cuck perspectives out there. So we're making progress. But um, it's also really important for women to connect with other women who have experience in this kind of relationship dynamic and so oh i love the the fact that you brought that up that is so 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 important um how does a couple and i'm sure you get this asked all the time how does a couple find a therapist who is open minded to this that won't kind of judge them on their sexy fantasies well this is such an important question and it's so important for people to know that most therapists would shake their head and shake their finger at you for even engaging in this because they're untrained. They don't understand sexual fantasies or sexual health. Um, and so you, to find the right therapist, you have to go to, sometimes there's something called the ASECT, A-A-S-E-C-T. It's a American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists.org. And in that organization, which I belong to, I'm a supervisor, I'm a certified sex therapist, you can find people in your area that would not bat an eye at this, that would understand it and work with you from a sex positive place because most therapists would see this as pathological and uh, attachment disordered and trauma disordered. And I could go on and on. And so I'm glad you're asking that. That sucks that. uh, (laughs) I I used to be one of those therapists. I know because we're not trained in sex and I don't, I'm not attacking therapists. We are, we've been locked out of sexual health forever. So mental health was over here. Medical health was over here and sexual health was over there. We all were all separated. Now it's changing, but it's slow. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, do you, before we wrap this up, I absolutely love all of the uh, advice that you have given so far. Do you have any final thoughts on what, um, what would be important for couples or, or even single cucks to, to think about when it comes to, when it comes to cuck holding? do anything you can to get rid of any kind of shame that you have attached to this. And like you said, the guys will be like, why don't I want to be the bull? Why do I want to be the cuck? As if, as if it matters, being the cuck can be more powerful than the bull. I mean, there's so much. So I think they should educate themselves reading David Lay's book, Insatiable Wives, getting on FetLife, right. And finding a community um, and just being willing to have as many difficult and sometimes brutal conversations with each other about what's happening. That's, that's the spice of a relationship, no matter what you're going through. Okay. Where can people learn more about you, listen to your show, read your blog, all that sort of stuff? Yep. Everything can be found at my website at um, Joe Court, J O E. K-O-R-T.com. Um, but any any of my social media, um, TikToks, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook is at Dr. Joe Court, D-R-J-O-E-K-O-R-T. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I just think this has been absolutely so valuable for, for people out there who are listening. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. By the way, uh, shout out to my helpful cuck supporter, uh, Sean, who recommended you as a guest for the show today. So thank you for that, Sean. And thank you, Dr. Court, for coming on the show. Thank you. And thanks for being doing this work. I think it's great work. And thanks, Sean, for having me on the show. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. That's where you can book a private chat with me. You can check out any cuckolding events that might be happening. And you can even ask a question for the show as well as, of course, join the Queen's Quarters fan club and get all the benefits for that. You can also follow me on Instagram, the Venus Cuckoldress podcast. I haven't been banned there. Well, I have, but not recently. (laughs) You can also follow me on Twitter or whatever the fuck you want to call it. My handle is at V. That's it for today. We'll see you next time.
Can you believe it's been four years since I first started this podcast? And looking back, I had no idea that this would be my full time job. I love the work that I do. And it's because of you, the listeners, and your support that I'm able to do this. So, right now, if you join the Helpful Cuck tier, you get tons of benefits. My favorite ones are the private one to one chat every month. You also get access to my private Snapchat group. Weekly live hangouts with me on Crowdcast. I love those. And you get juicy bonus episodes. There's key holding. There's video replays of the Pillow Talk events. And there's also access to my private community on the Moan app. So join right now. You can use the promo code CUCKLOVE2024 for 15% off your Helpful Cuck membership at venuscuckledges.com.